Um, and that happens just out of coincidence, simply by following the Lambda interface conventions without having known it. So a lot of the callbacks that we see in Spring, they have just one method that you have to implement. For example, um, with JMS template, there is a message creator callback that you can implement. It defines one method, create message, takes the JMS session and returns a JMS message, like a text message, et cetera. Another example with uh, Spring's transaction template, it has a callback named transaction callback that allows you to do something within a transaction and uh, simple method you implement that's a great candidate for a Lambda expression. Now JDBC template, we'll look at this in more detail um, so you get a better, a better feel for what we're talking about. Uh, who's used the Roam app ever before in Spring's JDBC support? A few more people? Okay. So this is one thing that I, I tell a lot of people. If I didn't use any other part of Spring and I just wanted to write JDBC code, so SQL, interaction with the database, I would use Spring's JDBC support, JDBC template, and, and the Roam app. So it's a great tool uh, for interacting directly with SQL if you don't want to go to full-blown um, OR mapper like Hibernate or JPA, et cetera. <coughs> So basically, what it has is this really simple uh, callback here. You want to map a row. So from the result set, from the current row in the result set, we're talking about the JDBC result set here. This row num represents the number you're currently on. Spring manages all this way in the background. You just implement this method. You take the result set, get the information out of it, and you create your object. So for example, you might be creating a, a user object or um, an account object, something like that, from the current row that was returned in the SQL results. And this is a great candidate for uh, use as a, a Lambda function. Here we see real life example. So we have a JDBC template from Spring's JDBC support created somehow with access to the data source, um, also with transaction management somewhere in the Spring config. And then with this JDBC template, we have this query method. Um, don't have the source code here. But basically it takes uh, a string. The string can have placeholders in it, so SQL placeholders. 